Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're spending a lot of time trying to learn how to, how to use Transex. As you could see from the last video, Transex is not a simple MFD. It's that there's a lot to it, but it's also very powerful. It's a very powerful MFD. So it's important that we learn how to use it, uh, how, how we learn, you know, we learn the fundamentals so that we can learn how to navigate the different stages and the different views and how to change the projections and do all these different types of things. Now this video is a direct continuation of the last video, and the last video was a direct continuation of the previous one, so it's very important that you've seen the last two videos in this part of the series and that, you, and that you're up to speed on what we're doing here because otherwise you're going to be completely lost on this part. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here and we'll jump back into where we left off. Now in the uh, first video in this, in this set, we set up our plan for going back to the Earth from the Moon. Then in the last video we actually lifted up off the Moon, got into orbit around the Moon, and we set up our maneuver for going back to Earth. And that's kind of where we're at now. We're only 576 seconds away. Let me go back to real time. We're only 575 seconds away from the time to do the burn. But remember, we talked about how when you set up your maneuvers really far in advance, you know, like 1,000 seconds or 2,000 seconds, and especially if you get out where you're setting up maneuvers 15 or 20,000 seconds in advance, um, which is probably never a good idea, actually. But you, whenever you do that, you always want to check, you need to double check your maneuver right before it's actually time to do the burn. Because when you, when you set up the maneuver 500, uh, or let's say a thousand seconds in advance, the different bodies will have, will change slightly. There's perturbations that happen that occur in those thousand seconds until you get up to the burn. And that will have some impact on how the burn turns out. And that impact can be drastic in some cases, and in other cases it might not matter in the slightest. But we won't know unless we check. So what, it's always a good idea right before you get ready to commit to the burn, when you're within just say 300 seconds, that's a good number. 300 seconds is 5 minutes. 60 times 5 is... Uh, am I doing my math right there? Whatever. Six, uh, 300 seconds is 5 minutes. I guess I'm trying to say 300 divided by 60 is five, so that's how I come up with the five minutes. So with, when you're within five minutes of the burn, you want to go back to the uh, view maneuver and press VAR until you see this where it says plus plus updates. I'm not actually sure why it says base orbit updates, but basically where it says updates. And you want to hit the plus button here. Um, I think you can actually hit minus either, but hit the plus button. And basically what that does is it tells Transex, it says, Okay, Transex, I set up this maneuver 600 seconds ago or 1,000 seconds ago, but when I press plus plus here, I want you to re-read everything, reread the universe, reread the Earth's position, reread my ship's position, reread the moon's position, reread the sun, reread everything, and, and make sure that all the trajectories are correct right now, this very second. And you can do that all the way up to the time that you do the burn, but Typically, when you're within 300 seconds of the burn, it's fine. Anything beyond that, and nothing's really going to change by any significant amount. But now let's talk about what we can do to kind of refine our maneuver for going back to Earth. So in View Maneuver, you'll notice over here that it says our Focus PED. This is our periapsis when we get back to Earth. It says it's going to be 7,000. 739 and that's above the center of the earth so let's do a quick calculation if we take that number 7738 minus the radius of the earth which is 6371 we come up with 1367 kilometers so according to the according to transex if we do this burn, when we arrive back at Earth, our orbital altitude at Earth is going to be 1,367 kilometers. Typically, when we arrive at Earth, we want an altitude, <clears throat> depending on how you're going to do your braking. If you're going to do atmospheric braking, then you want an altitude of about 60 kilometers. 
if you're going to do uh, main engine braking, then you want an altitude of about 200 kilometers. Whatever you want your altitude to be, that's what you want your focus PED to be. So in this case, you can see that our focus PED is a lot higher than we really want it to be. The way we can change that, uh, we still have, you know, 345 seconds left before we need to do the burn. The way we can change our focus PED is by coming over to the view maneuver and adjusting our prograde a little bit and or adjusting our time to do the burn. I recommend that you actually start with the time. So notice it's all the way down under the micro setting. We probably want hyper. Uh, let me do a, an adjustment here. And just by taking out a little bit of time, it actually is saying that we're going to do our it's actually going to raise our focus PED a little bit. That's not really what we want. We want our focus PED to be closer to 200. So let's just add in a little bit of time. And now it's kind of going back down. So let's find the low point, which is about right here. And now let's adjust it using the prograde variable. And with course is way too much. So let's go all the way down to, let's go all the way down to ultra. And let's just add in or subtract prograde until the focus PED comes down and I can see that by adding in prograde it's coming down so let me do an adjustment to super and just adding in some prograde and that's bringing the uh, focus PED down and let's say we want a focus PED of 200 kilometers then this would be this would be the amount of prograde that we would need would be right six five seven one. Let me actually pause because we're coming up to the burn here really quickly. So in a perfect world, if trans if transects were perfect, then this would mean that now when we do our burn here in just a few seconds, when we get back to Earth, this is uh, this is what our altitude is going to be. It's going to be 200 kilometers above the above the surface. And it even says here, you know, the minimum altitude since we have the view encounter. It says the minimum altitude is 200 kilometers. Unfortunately, TransX, again, I'll say, it, you'll, you'll hear me say this tons of times, it's just not that accurate. So we, we can use this as our base, but know, even from here at the moon, that by the time we go all the way forward to the Earth, this is going to have changed. And unfortunately, it's probably going to change a lot. It may change by 300, 400, 500, 600 kilometers, maybe even 1,000 or more. I really don't know. And that's just due to the inaccuracy of TransX. When we start learning how to use IMFD in the Absolute Beginner Guide, then you'll see that uh, when we set this up using IMFD and we say that we want to arrive at Earth at 200 kilometers, when we actually get back to Earth, we will be at 200 kilometers because IMFD's map program is, 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 is it's that accurate. But unfortunately, TransX is not that accurate, so it's just something that you have to note. But now our burn is, it's complete. We have everything set up how we need it to be set up. I'm gonna take a sip of water here. And we're ready to commit to this burn. Now, if we wanna do atmospheric braking, then what we would wanna do is bring our focus PED down even more. So instead of 6371, it would be, let's take 6371 plus 60, because that's about the altitude that you want for atmospheric braking. Then we would want to set our focus PED at 6431, but we're just going to, in this basic example, we'll, we're not even really worried about whether we do atmospheric braking or main engine or whatever. So let's just uh, go ahead and unpause. Let's VW over to the uh, view target. And remember, the old school way of burning a maneuver once it was set up was that you would have to turn on the uh, rotation mode and you would have to line this X up with the center manually. So we would do something like this and put in a little bit of time warp to speed that up. Be careful though when you do the time warp not to go past the begin burn time. But uh, fortunately we don't have to do it this way anymore. And for absolute beginners I recommend that before it's time to do the burn when you're it probably, you know, depending on how far out of orientation you are with the center point, you know, turn auto center on and it will center that green X up for you. Um, you probably don't need to do it any sooner than maybe 200 seconds. And that would be like if your ship is completely backwards and upside down, then it might take a full 200 seconds to line it up. If you, if you think in advance 
So when you're you know, at 500 seconds, if you start orienting the vessel yourself manually and you get it pretty close, then you only need you know, 10 or 15 seconds to get the vessel oriented. You can see you know, where the begin burn time is still 166 seconds out and it's already centered up. Now, uh, another feature that we can take advantage of that uh, is relatively new, if you have the newest version of burn time calculator, you can bring up burn time calculator at this point when you get down to you know a couple minutes away from the burn like we are now and you can press get and that will get the burn from transx copy it into burn time calculator and burn time calculator will then carry out the burn um, unfortunately it's not perfect and it will it will stop burning you'll notice here it says the delta v that we need is 842 and trans uh, burn time calculator is going to stop the burn uh, about four meters per second early which is i think is a bit too much i think it should actually just be one meter per second early but uh, nevertheless this is something you can do and it's a little bit probably a little bit easier for the absolute beginner to uh, use burn time calculator to do the burn just know that when the burn's done you're still going to have to add a couple extra meters per second in order to have the burn complete but we'll show how to do that here Let's go ahead and warp time forward to get to the uh, time to do the burn and we can even leave it on 10x and burn time calculator will handle the burn at 10x with no problem just don't go to 100 you'll screw things up completely and when you get down to maybe 100 meters go back to real time and now turn auto center off immediately let me actually press pause i i've said this i've stressed this in the previous videos but i'm going to stress it again as soon as the burn is done turn auto center off don't ever forget to do that if you ever forget to turn auto center off and then you go and turn maneuver mode off it's going to really screw up your flight trust me so once auto center is off then we're going to press vw to get to the maneuver now we need to turn maneuver mode off and now maneuver mode's off now on this side we're going to bring up transx and we're going to view our encounter over here uh, which we already have and remember if we want our orbital altitude at earth we said it was going to be 200 so this would need to be 6.571 but uh, the reason it's not is because uh, for one transx is inaccurate and for two when we got the maneuver using burn time calculator it didn't complete the burn all the way but if we go to translation and just put in a little bit more forward translation you can see that focus ped coming down now we're almost to 6.571. Now we're at 6.571. So now we know that in a perfect world, which we don't live in with Transex, then when we got back to Earth, our orbital altitude would be uh, 200 kilometers above the surface. That's it. You're done. Um, there isn't a whole lot more to do with uh, Transex for going back to Earth, but let's go ahead and uh, warp time forward and complete the flight just so we can see what we have to do. Rotation. Uh, kill rotate is always a good idea before you warp time forward. So let's go ahead and warp time forward at a thousand just to get out away from the moon. And once I get over here to the retrograde position, I like to come back to real time and kill rotate again. Now I'll go to 10,000. And you can see the moon, the moon zipping behind you rather quickly. And eventually this should switch from orbit moon to orbit sun once we're far enough away from the moon. And you'll notice our focus PD going completely crazy again. That's just the world we live in with Transex. And it doesn't actually look like our orbit updated. No, we should definitely be in orbit sun by now, I believe. Sometimes it, it doesn't update, and I don't know why that is. It just, it's just the way things are. But once you're far enough away from the moon, um, and you'll notice your stage is updated, we no longer have a stage two, we now just have stage one. Uh, you'll see the focus PD has again changed drastically. But once you're far enough away from the moon for its gravitational influence to be nothing, it's a good idea to bring orbit MFD up on one side and reference the Earth. Then copy that information to the HUD by pressing the HUD button. And then we're going to continue to warp time forward until we are within the strong SOI of Earth. And we know we're within the strong SOI of Earth when the gravitational 
influence here changes from red to green. And that happens when this reaches about 0 0.50. So let's continue warping time forward. Notice our focus PD is uh, going up. It's, go it's getting better in our favor. Now we are within the strong SOI of Earth. This would be the point where you want to do your first mid-course correction. And there's a couple ways to do it, but the easiest thing to do in the way that uh, I would recommend it for the absolute beginner would be to just do the, the concept of the inward and the outward burn. So first of all, let's go prograde to Earth so that we know which way to orient, so that we know which way we're facing. And we can see here that our PEA, according to Orbit MFD, is negative 1,984. And we know also that it's not right, that it's off by a bit. But it's probably not off by so much that we should ignore it. So now that we're within the strong SOI of Earth, we need to do either an inward burn or an outward burn to raise or lower our periapsis accordingly. Now, which way do we need to orient? Think back to when we went to the moon. When we went to the moon, our periapsis at the moon was like 5,000 above the surface. And we oriented the, the vessel inward so that it was facing the moon so that we could bring down our periapsis. But in this case, we want to do the opposite. We want to raise our periapsis because currently it's way below the surface. It's, it's so far below the surface that we would... Uh, that even that even an atmospheric braking maneuver would be impossible, most likely. So in this case, instead of doing inward, we want to do outward. We want to face out away from our orbit or out away from the Earth. Translation. Rotation. So let's go to rotation. Let's make sure our ship is nice and level. And let's rotate outward by 90 degrees. And there's 90. And just get everything nice and level. Now, as we go forward toward the Earth, our uh, focus PED is going to continue to go up, but we don't know by how much. So we're just going to take a, a, a ballpark guess here, and we're going to bring our PEA up to the surface. We're going to bring it just to zero, because we're assuming that as we go forward, it's going to continue to climb. So let's put in a little bit of main engine here, actually a lot of main engine. and getting really close to zero. And there we are. We're basically at the surface. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're four kilometers above the surface. That's fine. Now let's go prograde. So we're facing the Earth. Now there's a couple of indicators that we can look for. Uh, well, the one that I like to look for is when the gravitational influence reaches 0, 0.80. Because at that point, you... Uh, you, you then have enough accuracy with these MFDs that you can start making adjustments to your PEA and it'll be very accurate at that point. Or it'll be sufficiently accurate. The other thing you could look at is your PET. That's your time to periapsis. That's when you're going to reach the lowest point at Earth. Um, and you could do halves. In other words, from this point that we're at right now, which is 124,000 seconds away from periapsis, we could cut that number in half and say, let's, let's check in again when the PET is half that number, which would be about 60,000. Or if you want to be pedantic about it, it would be 62,200, but about 60,000. Let's kill rotate so that we're not spinning around as we uh, warp time forward. And let's go to uh, that 60,000 point. And we're almost there. And so we're about halfway from the position we were to where we are now. And the gravitational influence is up to 0.71. Let's rotate back around to the prograde position. And this is just a good point to check. Uh, currently, it says our PEA is 87 kilometers. Notice that it's raised. It was 4. It's gone all the way up to 87. The closer we get to the Earth, the more accurate this information becomes. By this point, it's accurate enough that if you want, if, again, if you want your target PEA to be 200 kilometers, then you can now raise it a little bit more. It's going to continue to go up as we get closer to the Earth, so you don't necessarily want to take it all the way to 200, but we can raise it a little bit more at this point. 
So let's uh, with let's go to tra uh, translation mode, translation. and we don't need to necessarily rotate out to 90 at this point because at this point we can accomplish the same thing by using lateral translation thrusters. So essentially, we need to thrust the vessel this way, and we could do that by rotating 90 degrees like we did before, then using a little bit of the main engine. But at this point, our movements are so slight that we can use lateral translation by pressing three. Notice it's burning out of that side. And by burning out of that side, we're thrusting the vessel that way because Isaac Newton said that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So if we thrust out that way, it's gonna move our vessel that way. And that's the same thing as rotating to 90 degrees and using the main engines. So just by using a little bit of lateral translation, let's bring our PEA up to say 150 kilometers. Because again, it's gonna go up as we get closer to the earth, but we don't know by how much. Now let's go forward until we half that number one more time. So instead of 62, we'll go down to about 30,000 or 31 again, if you wanna be very particular about it. Rotation. So warping time forward, be a little bit careful with the time warp. Don't let it get away from you. And we're coming up to about 31, there we are. Let's come back to real time. And you'll notice that from the point that we were, uh, you know, at uh, 60,000 seconds, our PEA went from 150 to 16. So it's getting increasingly accurate as we get in closer and closer to the Earth. Translation, rotation. So let's rotate back to the prograde position. Translation. And now let's raise it a little bit more. Now we're getting very accurate because you can see the gravitational influence is 0 0.85. So at this point, we could probably bring it all the way to like 190. Maybe even like 192, 193, something like that. Now let's warp time forward, and we're not going to worry about cutting this in half constantly. Let's go all the way forward until we're down to, say, 10,000 seconds. Okay, there we are. Now we're 10,000 seconds out. Our PEA is 196, and it's very, very accurate at this point. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about about adjusting the periapsis because, you know, 196 kilometers or 200 kilometers, it's not going to make a lot of difference. But to just pick a target and aim for it, we'll go to 200. And you'll see now that by the time we go from 9,000 seconds down to zero and do our uh, and do our orbit circularization burn around the Earth, that this number will be pretty close. It'll probably end up being 201 or 202 by the time we actually get all the way to periapsis. Now there's one more maneuver that we can set up, and that's the like we did when we went to the moon, and we set up our maneuver to do the braking burn at the moon to get in orbit around the moon. We can also do that at Earth. Um, it, it, typically, for any normal flight, I would always do an atmospheric braking maneuver at Earth. But in this example, we're just going to set up a maneuver and do a main engine braking burn. But let's warp time forward because if we set up the maneuver now, we're going to be setting up the maneuver 9,000 seconds in advance and there's no point in that. So let's go forward until PEA or PET is all the way down to just 1,000. And there we are, it's actually overshot it a little bit, but notice that our PA did adjust a little bit, and surprisingly, it actually went down ever so slightly. I assumed it would go up a little bit more, but that's fine. You can see it's really accurate when you're there at just 10,000 seconds away. It's really close to whatever you set it at. Now, let's set up our main engine uh, braking burn. <clears throat> and we do that by uh, going to maneuver, and, you know, transex, turn maneuver mode on, and the first thing that we want to do is set the time of the burn because we're not going to do the burn this very second. We're going to do the burn when we reach periapsis. And we know when we're going to reach periapsis because it's given to us right here, the PEMJD. So we're going to adjust maneuver date, which can be thought of as time, maneuver time. And we want to change that all the way down to an uh, probably, yeah, probably ultra for starters. And we're going to set it actually even hyper because we're very close already. So 56740.6322 becomes 56740.6430. It looks like we can do ultra here at first. Now hyper. 
and now these match. Now, in order to do the breaking berm, we need to, uh, it's going to be negative prograde. So we can start by putting in a bunch of negative prograde. And again, notice that it's just really hard to see what's going on down here. <clears throat> so if we press VW to get over to setup, and then view the scale to view down to target, we get a zoomed in view of the earth. And now we can go back to the view maneuver and we can continue adding in the negative prograde <clears throat> until our hypothetical shows that we have a circular orbit. Once you get down to a point like this, I recommend doing an adjustment down to medium. And now we also kind of want to start watching our hypothetical PED. Once it starts counting backwards, like now, then we know we're getting about to the point that we want to be at. Uh, again, 6.371 uh, 6 plus 200 would be 6.571. That's showing. That actually looks to me like it's more circular there, but let's uh, let's trust the hypothetical PED and let's set that to 6.571. even though it looks to me like that's not quite circular, but um, you, you can set it up this way and then just use, actually, I'm not gonna trust that at all, 6.57, because that would be, yeah, that would be way out there. So you just, I would say just eyeball it once you have, once you have the, uh, about like that. That's looks to me like we're gonna have, well, that's coming in too tight on that side. That's going to be better. What you could also do is go over to the uh, maneuver date, and it might help if you do the uh, if you set this one second or so. Well, I shouldn't say one second, but one moment before that time. So instead of six point or instead of point six four three zero, try point six four two nine. And that'll kind of balance things out a little bit better, maybe even 0.628. Now I'll go back over to the uh, prograde and see if you can do a bit more refinement. What we're looking for is we just want to have a nice circular band. And I think I did it over to the time. Let's go back to 0 0.6429. Like that. Anyway, once you get to that point, um, then you can view over to target. And let's get to within 300 seconds of the burn. Now view over to maneuver. Do an update, like always. Just see if anything changed. It still says that the time is 6.6430, uh, so we're fine. And what we'll do, instead of relying strictly on transex, we'll, we'll rely a little bit on orbit MFD to help us as well. So we'll keep that open on this side projection ship, distance, PEA, APA. And as we do this burn here, we'll, we'll pay attention to our numbers on this side. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, I didn't mean to hit select. Let's press VW to get over to target. And let's turn on the auto center. A lot of variables to go through. And, some, and sometimes it's better to go backwards. So instead of pressing VAR to go forward through all those variables, hit minus VR. But uh, we're, we're very far out of orientation, so it would help to go ahead and turn that on now and just give it plenty of time to set us up or give it plenty of time to center up the maneuver. And it's not perfect. It kind of overshoots that way a little bit, and then it's going to come back. So that's why when I'm really far out of alignment, I prefer to manually adjust the X into the center or get it really close myself then I'll turn on auto center. That way it doesn't have to figure it out because humans are just a little bit better at figuring some of this stuff out because you'll notice it actually has this upside down at the moment. And I know that it, and before it's done, it's going to orient the vessel back over. So it's, it's being a little bit wasteful at the moment. At least I think it'll orient us back over. Maybe it won't, but it has us at the zero, posi zero position all the same. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do this burn manually. I'm not going to bother bringing up burn time calculator and having it get Main reason for that is because I want to kind of babysit this burn a little bit rather than trusting strictly on on uh, 
this delta V amount, I'm gonna, I know that I want the PEA to be about 200 and the APA to be about 200. So I don't care when this maneuver is all said and done, if the delta V says that I still got 100 left to go or if I've got 50 left to go, whatever, I don't care. I'm gonna look more at this stuff because we're now in orbit around the Earth and this is perfectly accurate. Doing the burn in two seconds, one, and burning. Go ahead and uh, we can warp time forward because we've got 3,000 delta V to burn through. One thing you do want to watch is the PEA. Notice it's counting down. That actually concerns me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn auto center off. Going to go to rotation. And if we rotate a bit outward away from the uh, center point, that will prevent the PEA from going down. And this is actually, it's unfortunate that you can't have auto center on for this because um, and I've never done this particular burn before with auto center, so I'm just finding this out for the first time myself. But what you can actually have happen is it'll it'll drive your PEA down so low that you'll be in the atmosphere. So you have to watch it, and that's why I'm taking manual control here and babysitting this myself. Because if your PEA drops down to like 110, then you're going to be dragging through the atmosphere, and that's a that's a problem if you're trying to like come back to Earth and then rendezvous with the ISS or something. So. Just babysitting this, watching the PEA, and as it as it as we get closer to uh, the periapsis point, we can start allowing the vessel to yaw back to the center. But right now, it's fine where it's at. The PEA is holding perfectly, so we don't have to worry about it. And remember, I'm doing this burn manually, so I have to remember to kill the engines here in just a moment. And then once we get our orbit circularization done, we'll be done with this part of the video. Notice the PEA is starting to go down. So let me yaw out a little bit to prevent that from happening. Actually, I take that back. I'm actually past periapsis now, so I can actually yaw in. And as you get down to 1,000 on the APA, if you want, you can actually go maybe half thrust so that you can control this stuff more, more pickily, more, more manually. As you pass the periapsis point, you actually have to rotate inward in order to prevent the PEA from going up. Or rather, from in order to prevent the PEA from going down. But again, I want a PEA around 200 kilometers and an APA around 200 kilometers. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's the target. And eh, something like that. That's not the greatest in the world, but we'll take it. So auto center's off and the maneuver at this point doesn't really matter, but we'll shut it off. So you can see for that particular burn, we really didn't use the maneuver to the, all that great extent, but nevertheless, that's how you would set it up. And now our orbit is, um, it's not perfect, but uh, you know, doing the burn and talking and explaining all those things uh, doesn't help. Anyway, we're well past 30 minutes and I'm trying to keep these videos around 30 minutes. So let me go ahead and end it here. But that completes this part of the explanation. That's how you set up Transex to go from the moon back to the Earth. And the alternate method for arriving at Earth, of course, is to set your periapsis altitude at 60 kilometers, and then you can do atmospheric braking so that you don't have that expensive 3,000 delta V worth of braking. But I didn't want to get into all that in this uh, first explanation. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you can be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos. Leave your comments and questions down below. I answer, I try to answer all the questions and I pretty much reply to all the comments as well. So if you comment on the video, uh, you should expect to hear from me. And I will see you in the next video.